What is that sound? What is happening? What? <laughs> oh my god! Jesus! Because I remember that was only one night spot. Oh god! <laughs> Duck. I can live my life over again. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Special delivery, one giant green and yellow banana. Okay, I'm not- I don't mean- Dude, don't bring me here. I'm still dancing. I need to stop dancing. Stop dancing. Stop dancing. Stop dancing. Stop. What you have just witnessed is Gary's mod, or Gmod as it's commonly known. Gmod is a sandbox game that allows players to create and manipulate the game's world using the Source game engine. Gmod was created as a Half-Life 2 mod by Gary Newman back in 2004, but only two years later it would become one of the most famous games ever published by Valve. Now, with all that out of the way, let's rewind a bit and head back. This is Gmod's main screen. The top left has start new game, find multiplayer game, add-ons, dupes, saves, demos, options, and quit. The top right shows updates, and then the bottom right are problems, games, your language, and it shows that you're in sandbox right now. All you have to do from here is click start new game, and it'll take you to the map selection screen. There's only three things to look at on this screen. The top left, the top right, and the bottom right. The top left shows all of your maps, but we're only focusing on one map right now because that's all you need to fully explain everything. So our selected map is in blue, which is GM Construct, and on the top right, you'll see it says single player in green. You'd be able to click on this and then just pick the limit of people that you want to be able to join. So let's say you have eight people, including you, that want to play in the same world. You just click 8, and then you're able to name the server, check whether or not it's a local server, whether it's peer-to-peer, -peer, which is how you normally connect in the first place, and peer-to-peer -peer friends only, if you only want your friends to join. Here it says max props, max ragdolls, vehicles, effects, balloons, cameras, so on and so forth. This is all in an effort to limit the amount of things that can be spawned or manipulated in your world. This is especially important when there's a lot of people in your world. To simplify this as much as I can to help you get running fast, you don't really have to mess with any of these settings, except whether or not you want allow PvP on, if you want your friends or other players to have god mode, and whether or not you want weapons on spawn. This is all customized on your own, but for now, you don't even have to worry about this. Let's go back to single player. In single player, don't even worry about any of this stuff. All you have to do is, on the bottom right, click start game, or the map that you want to play in, with your settings already selected on the right side. You could just double click on the map. And it starts. You've just spawned in, you're in the map, you're here at GM Construct. First thing you should do is get used to the controls. W forward, S back, A left, D right. Spacebar is to jump. Control is to crouch. Left shift is to run. If you want to no clip or basically be able to pass through walls and move around in the air, you just press the V key on your keyboard. You're able to move around in the air or pass through walls. All you have to do to get out of it is press the V key one more time. Now using your scroll wheel or the numbers on your keyboard from 1 to 6, you're able to pick between different weapons and different tools. At the top of the list in 1, it's the crowbar. And the second is the gravity gun. Now, this doesn't affect inanimate objects or parts of the map. It only affects a prop or something that you spawned in. If you were to right click on a prop and hold it, you're able to pick it up. If you left click, you'll shoot it away from you. And if you do a combination of right clicking and holding, and then left clicking and shooting, then you can launch things. The physics gun is what you spawned in with. This is what is with you at the beginning of the map. If you left click and hold, 
you're able to pick up objects weightlessly. And if you hold the left click and then press your right click, you're able to freeze an object wherever it was. The rest of the list is just weapons. There are some weapons that are fairly special that have an alt fire. So instead of clicking left click, if you press right click, There are some weapons that are a little bit more special than others, like this rocket launcher. The last two are the camera and the tool gun. Now the tool gun is where you're able to get really creative. And this brings me to the menus that are incredibly important to know. If you press and hold Q on your keyboard, a menu will pop up. From here, you're able to select spawnable props. You're able to select weapons, you're able to select entities, NPCs, vehicles, effects on your screen, dupes, which we'll get into in a little bit later, and saves. To spawn an item, there's two ways. Either you look where you want to spawn the item, open up the menu with Q, and click. And it spawns the item that you were just looking at in the menu exactly where you were looking at in the game. The second way of doing it is right clicking and click spawn using tool gun. This will bring out the tool gun we just saw earlier. Now, wherever you're looking, you can just left click and it spawns the item wherever you look. Now that you know how to spawn props, you're able to look through the list on the left. And these are all defaults, meaning that it came with the game. This is all in the game from the beginning. You can do the same thing in the weapons tab. If you left click, it'll pull out the weapon. Right click and you're able to spawn using the tool gun. In entities, for now there's nothing much here, but for now, let's just click on a bouncy ball. You're able to do the same thing where you left click and it spawns wherever you're looking at, or right click and spawn using the tool gun. If you left click using the physics gun and you hold the item, as long as you hold left click and then hold E, now using the mouse, you're able to turn the item around and manipulate it in whichever way you want it to be. Now, the thing about left clicking to spawn where you look and right clicking to spawn with the tool gun goes for NPCs and vehicles as well. In NPCs, this is what you'll see. Let's stick with animals because it's the easiest one to show right now. Left click to spawn or spawn using the tool gun. And if you want to spawn it with the weapon, it's right underneath the tool gun selection. Vehicles spawn the same way. Let's say you want to spawn this airboat or jeep or pod you left click wherever you're looking at and you're able to just spawn that or use the tool gun the e key you're able to turn props around with is the same key you press to get into seats for example if you want to see a third person view like when you're in a vehicle click the control key on your keyboard and you're able to scroll in and scroll out how far away you want to be Majority of the time, unless you've custom built your vehicle, the regular key binds for moving around are WASD. Post processes are camera effects. If you click on motion blur, for example, a menu on the right side will change and now you'll see simple settings for the motion blur. So let's say you click enable 
when you move your player, there'll be some weird ghosting and motion blur. Dupes are a whole other thing. If you click, for example, currently popular, it'll bring you a wide list of creations that other people have already made. And you're able to just spawn them in yours. For example, let's say this water tower. Wherever you look is wherever it'll spawn. And it did say it's destructible, so if I use this rocket launcher... So let's say that your world has a bunch of crap all over the place, and you want to clean it up. The fastest way to do that is to open up the Q key menu, or the spawn menu. Where you want to go to is utilities. If you click admin cleanup, it'll bring up this list of specific things to clean up or just click clean up everything when you click that everything's gone now since you have that menu open here if you open up the c menu or the context menu this will already be there ready to go whichever tool menu you have open on the right side it'll be right there when you open up the context menu speaking of the tool menu though this is the important part. This is where you're able to make whatever the hell you want and do whatever you want. The first one is constraints. The access constraint is the first in the list. It allows you to take one prop and connect it to another on a specific access. I'll give you an example. Let's take this door, spawn it. Now let's spawn a prop we want to connect on an access. Now all you do is click the access constraint. It'll open up the tool gun directly. And now left click on the prop and left click again if I pull out the gravity gun and I shoot it it's only able to spin where I welded it onto the door the ball socket constraint is similar to the axis constraint but instead of letting it only spin in one way the ball socket basically lets it move in whichever way it wants on that point that you welded that prop onto I'll spawn this deli countertop and this chair now if I click ball socket it'll pull out the tool gun again and all I have to do is select the object which is this and then select the other object that I want to connect it to which is this deli thing if I turn it upside down it'll be able to move around freely around that point I welded it onto Although you don't see a physical connection, that connection is there. The next is the elastic constraint. It connects one object to another using a sort of rope, or like a bungee cord in a way. So if I spawn this, and then I spawn this, click to one, and then click to the other, you're able to see a physical cord. So if I hold on to it using the physics gun, and I go into no clip mode using the V key, I'd be able to easily drag around the other connected object on an elastic bungee cord. You can use this for a lot. It's it's not just playing around like this. You can definitely build really cool things like a catapult for example. The next is the hydraulic constraint. It creates a connection between two props that are able to expand and contract on whatever key that you click on. So this is the toggle key on the right menu. So let's say you click on this and let's say you press J. J is now the toggle key for this. So if I spawn two props again, all I have to do is just click one prop and then now click the other and now it creates what looks like a really thick rope. Now if I press the J key, it's able to expand and contract. By the way, just to mention for all of the constraints, the R key will get rid of all the constraints on the prop. All you have to do is just press R and it'll get rid of it. The motor constraint is fairly simple. It takes one prop, connects it to the other, and gives it power so it's able to rotate on an axis. I should be able to just put this right there. And click G. It can move on its own without needing any other sort of power. Now the muscle constraint is really similar to the hydraulic constraint. However, the difference is when you turn it on, it will contract continuously 
back and forth. If I click this and I click up here, now this looks like there's a rope. It's the same thing like the other ones where you're able to change the toggle button. I, I put mine to I and you're able to change colors and do everything else here. So now if I click I, it'll continuously expand and contract, expand and contract. And same thing like I mentioned earlier, you just click R and you can get rid of the connection. The next one is the pulley constraint. It's actually really straightforward. Let's say I spawn two washing machines here and here. And then now let's put a teapot right here. Let's put it like right there. Okay. Now if I click on the pulley one, and as you can see, there's no, there's nothing really here to like completely change. You don't have to have like a toggle or anything. This is just a free moving pulley. So let's say you click on one object, select a world position to be like the anchor point. So let, let's say I'll just click this wall. Now let's select that teapot up there. And now let's click the second object. All I have to do, let's say, is just move this one. And now it's pulling the rope through the anchor points like a real pulley. Same thing for the other one. It works both ways. The next constraint is the rope constraint. It's it's just a rope. It's a rope. Let's say uh, this furniture piece and this lamp. Click on the lamp. Click on the furniture piece. Boom. Thick ass rope. Now if I pick up the lamp, the rope will just pull the other piece with it. Next one is a slider. It lets you move an object on one axis, but the way it moves is that it slides, as it's in the name. If I pick this up, let's say put it like up here, and I go back and I click on the slider constraint. Let's say I click here and here. Since this is stuck in the air, that's fine. If I move this one, the only way for it to move is on that axis of that black rope that you see obviously it's just a connection in between it's not a real rope or anything because you can face through it but it shows you the way it's gonna go or the way the other constraints have worked so far so let's say it falls it also falls in that exact sliding position the next one is the well constraint this one is the really really fun one it's probably the one that you're gonna use a lot if you're building custom stuff Let's say this radiator and let's just, uh, let's say this. The way you can do it is you can select an object and then you can just attach it to that one. And now they're just welded. They don't even have to be next to each other. They can be a distance away and they'll be welded together. That's why there's a giant gap of air in between. But now they're connected and they move the exact same way and it's all the same direction the weight is affected so since i held this up it jiggles a little bit because that cabinet on the left is heavier than this radiator but if i move this one there's no flex or no wiggle the last one is the winch constraint this one is similar to the elastic and hydraulic ones and even the motor ones but the difference is is that it doesn't toggle at all and it only gets longer or shorter if you're clicking the button. And instead of spawning a second prop, I'll just use the world. There. And there. If I click G, it'll get longer. If I click H, it'll start to pull towards wherever it's connected to. Like an actual winch. We've completely covered the constraints now. The next thing is construction. Now construction is, well, it is what it's in the name. It lets you construct things. Let's say balloons. That's lets you create just random balloons. And these balloons do affect props. So let's say spawn that. And it's gone. Or let's say a button. This is someone else's creation really quickly. That will give you a good idea. This button right here, if you press the E key, it'll press this button and it'll activate this sliding door. 
and you're able to close that with another button. The next thing underneath button is duplicator. This is what ties into dupes, this tab over here, which is where you see a lot of people uploading their own creations. Let's say you made a masterpiece. All you have to do is right click, and now you're able to left click exactly whatever you've created. But if you wanted to save a duplication or dupes, for example, in this tab, on the right side, you'll see show save duplications and save dupe. If you want to, all you have to do is just click save dupe and now it'll be right here. And now you can publish or deploy. Deploy is just another way of opening up the tool gun directly and just doing this. The next one is dynamite. Exactly what you think it is, it's dynamite. <laughs> you can change how much damage, you can change the delay. Let's put this, let's say, let's put this delay to like four and a half seconds. Let's put it on K. Now, if I spawn dynamite. Oh, shit. <laughs> the next one is emitter. The emitter is fairly straightforward. It Again, it's, it just emits like particle effects. Now, the hover ball is really simple. It's a ball that hovers. I'll just put the up as O, P as down, and then toggle is X. I'll just put the speed up really crazy just to like really exaggerate what it does. So if you spawn this, it emits like a little blue light, for example, to show that it's on. It's able to go up and down for whichever keys you put. And toggling it off, it'll just turn off. Lamps are it's just lights. It's lights that can cast a shadow. Let's uh, let's put the toggle at F. And now let's put the FOV here. Again, this is just to like really exaggerate like how how far it can go and like what it can. And actually, let's do like that, like a tech demo. So light is really simple. It's like lamps where it gives off light, but it's like a light bulb on a rope or like on a string that dangles down. Now if I pull it to like uh, like this pink kind of red, it creates this kind of color. It gives you like a certain kind of shade. No collide, again, in the name. If I spawn two props together, right here. If I click on one and I click on the other, now they shouldn't be able to collide at all. They just phase through each other, like they don't exist. This is how you would avoid a lot of collision issues. They're still physical. Physical properties is a cool one. It just takes whatever prop you're looking at and it changes the properties of it so let's say i change the material to ice and you can also turn off the gravity so let's say apply this now if i just kind of let it go it slides around like it's on ice or like it is ice really you can even take off gravity on this one so if you take that off and then you press this now let's say you throw it up it's icy and it has no gravity. The remover, again, straightforward. Let's say you spawn a prop, you can just remove it. Or let's say you have two props connected to each other with like a like a pulley, sure, let's say like a pulley. If you use the remover and instead of left clicking, if you right click, it'll remove all of the things that are connected to it. Now the thruster is straightforward and same thing for the wheel, but this is the parts that get really fun. Because this is how people create certain vehicles or like certain contraptions. Let's say I pick this up and I'll just put the forward to G and the backward stage. And I just put the force as high as I can. You can change effects, so it's like particle effects that come out. So let's say I put plasma and even the way this it sounds. So let's say I put energy. Sure, let's put energy. Maybe you want it to look like a clock. Boom.
Now if you press the button, and by the way, I, I have it on a toggle, but you can always turn it off so it just, it doesn't stay on. If I press G, and if I press H, it'll go backwards. So now if I let go of this, and I press G, let me just back up for this. Next one is the wheel. Again, all of this stuff is fairly straightforward. Just click G, click H. For me, I put photon first for G and H. Just change the torque if you want to. Basically, how much power is, is sent to the wheels is what the torque slider is. If you use the E key, you're able to switch which way the wheels are going. So if they go f that way, counterclockwise or clockwise. I'll put them counterclockwise for now. On the same side, this one would have to go clockwise and clockwise. There's no seat on top, but you can still move it by itself. G, and H should bring it back. Because it'll go the other way... Basically, if I use weld and then turn on no collide, I'll just click on this. I just click on that and now they should both be welded together yep perfect and as normal as it is for Gmod it tends to work better backwards <laughs> now everything's done for the construction the other two is posing and render if I left click I can click on his eyes and now you see where he's looking so if I want to like I guess let's say look over over there, although his head turned towards me, his eyes will now be staring right over there. If I want like the eyes to like look at me, it's just the E key plus left click. Now, if you want to adjust like his eye position, all you have to do is right click and now go to eye poser right again. Now just look here in eye poser. Now it's right here. Now you can just change the eye direction and the size. The next thing is the face buzzer. Now let's spawn G-Man. All you would have to do is just left click. And now since you left click, you've selected his face. And when you open back up the menu, you'll see on the right side, there's a lot of choices. Now it, it already does like a ton of weird stuff on its own. Let's say you put the flex scale and now you click randomize. And now it just basically distorts the hell out of his face. <laughs> The next thing is the finger poser. So if you, let's say, let's spawn him. Just looking at his like fingers, click on finger poser, right click to select his finger, well his fingers, and let's say we just move his thumb like over here. For some reason, that looks horribly painful. So now if you look at it, it's completely messed up, but it is changed. You can do the same thing for the other ones if you want to. Just like completely like mess it up and do crazy stuff. <laughs> so the inflator is exactly what you think it is. It just inflates whatever you're looking at in, in terms of like a person. So if I want to, we can just inflate there a little bit. Or let's say her head. Oh god, the eyes. Oh god, the eyes. Let's say, let's say you just, I don't know, give her like a bigger leg or something. Now, if you want to make it thinner, you just right click. There you go. You can even make things way smaller too. And make some horrific things. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's it for posing. For rendering, this is fairly simple for camera. I'll just put that for K and I'll just leave toggle on. So, let's say you want to look up at here. I like a specific time. You just press wherever you're looking. 
with your left click and now there's a camera that's looking up exactly there so now let's say i'm, I'm over here i'm over in here now if i want to see where that is i just click k and now it immediately moves my camera position over to there so now on my screen i'm looking up at that building and now if you click back now you're back to where you were your character's still there so like let's say let's say i click it here your character's still there you're able to still move around i'm as you can see it's like right there that's fine and you can move this around all you want and you can even uh use the physics gun and move this around and put it in whichever way you want it to be. So let's say you want to just put it right there and hold it up in the air. Now if I press K, it's sideways. If I put it upside down, it'll be upside down. So it's not just like a static thing with a one hole. It actually is dynamic. So if I hold it like this and I put it upside down. Now if you go to color, you're able to recolor objects. So let's say I spawn this green vase thing. If I pick a specific color, let's say like that, and I press on it, now it just changes it to that color. So basically like puts like a paint right over all of these colors. It doesn't work for the map, like if you press on the ground, but it works for anything you spawn. And if you want to, you can even copy the color. Let's put this as blue. Now it's like a weird like shade of like teal, blue, and green. And then you spawn another object. If you copy back that color, you're able to just put it right here. See, so if I, let's say, put it like this. And if I copy this, it should just put it to green and green. The next thing is the material. So if you spawn another object, let's say, let's click on this material, whatever this material is. And you click on it. It now changes it to that material. You can even copy an object's material and then just put it to other things. Paint is pretty straightforward. It's similar to like color. However, it puts on textures instead. So let's say eyes. And let's say a mouth. Oh, and if, if you left click, it's faster, but if you right click, it's slower. Next thing is trails. Trails is really simple. It's whatever is produced when you move an object. So let's say I click on this object and let's say I just put like a random color. Let's just click on this, click length, click start size end size blah, blah blah and let's say I click these hearts now if I click on this and now I move this object now it just has these trails follows it wherever it goes next thing is utilities there's two kinds of utilities user and admin for user it cleans up only a few different items. User level items, simple items, friendly items, items that can't cause any problems. But for an admin, an admin's able to completely wipe the map clean of everything. So if you go to physics gun settings, the beam range is really simple. So it's how far this light comes out and is able to, let's say, pick up an item. So if I click that, I can pick it up from here. Yeah, so now if I if I if I lower the distance all the way down, I can only pick it up from a certain distance. Can't pick it up here, can't pick it up here, I can't pick it up here. Now I can pick it up. And if you max it, then you can pick up items from like a really, really far distance. So I can pick it up incredibly far away. Sandbox settings, again, it's exactly what you think it is. It just changes the settings you saw at the beginning when you made the map. Maybe I should have mentioned this earlier, but don't worry, I'll just put it in like a chapter timestamp, which is fine. If, let's say, you spawn like a bunch of items. Let's say you want to keep a few items, but want to just get rid of the rest. But instead of clicking context menu or the remove tool, you could just click Z on your keyboard. 
and it'll just get rid of whichever ones you spawn. So now, it's only left with the one you want to keep. That's it. That's literally it. You know Gmod. The next thing, though, are the mods. Oh, uh, one more thing before we start doing anything with mods. And let's say you did something really cool in, like, a world. Instead of saving it as a dupe, you know, let's say, let's say you built, like... Let's say you made like like a like a cool insane like art world and and like uh things are set up the exact way you want it to be instead of having to reset and like do all of this stuff all over again what you can do is go to the saves tab and then just click save game and now that everything is gone if you click load here it'll put you back exactly where you saved and it'll put back exactly what you've spawned in before you can also see other people's load worlds too. So let's say you go to currently popular. So if I click load and it loads you in exactly here. Time for mods. All you really have to do is click disconnect to leave the server. And the reason why you'd want to do this is because a lot of mods. And by the way, when I say mods, I really mean add-ons. So mods are add-ons. Now that we're back at the front page. And now, this is basically what you would see. You would never see anything here if you didn't have something already downloaded. There are a couple ways to do this. You could just go to Trending, Top Rated, Latest Uploads, or you could go directly to the Workshop. Uh, we'll, we'll get there in a second. So, let's go to Trending. So the first on the list are Game Modes. It's in the name. They're just different modes that you can play. So instead of the regular sandbox, let's say I click on Trench War. Now it shows up at the bottom that I'm downloading the Trench War game mode. So if I click Start New Game, Trench War is the name of the map. So we just look for the map name. And it's right there. So let's say I click on Trench War and I load into the game. This is a type of map that has a specific idea in mind. And a place from like A to B, for example. So let's say for this map. The idea is that there would be Team A and Team B, and Team A and Team B would be fighting. So if I spawn a bunch of NPCs, and now if I turn on NPC thinking... You get the point. Now if we go to game modes now, now it shows that Trench War is there. It's now in your list, and let's say you type T-R-E. Yep, it comes up. Perfect. So let's go back to Trending. Now the next thing are maps. So it's similar to game modes where it downloads a map directly. But the difference is there is nothing specific to do. It's just a map. So let's say I download the backrooms. Let's say I download the backrooms. Go to Start New Game. And now there's a whole thing here that says roleplay and says Apollyon Backrooms. We're in the backrooms. And again, it's just a map. It, there's, there's nothing on it. You'd have to do something yourself. And that's fine. That's like the, that's like the whole point of the game. You probably saw it flick on the screen a couple times. You don't actually really have to even leave your map that you're in right now to just go to add-ons or dupes or saves or anything. You can just go directly here and then just look at it from inside the map. The only reason why I would recommend just disconnecting and then doing it is you still would have to reload the map or even restart the game to get some mods working. So let's say go to weapons. It's exactly what you think it is. A modded weapon so let's see demo man launcher let's click on this and let's install it again it comes up to install download now if we go back to gmod construct and then you go to the weapons tab it'll be right there in other demo man launcher by the way this is a good time to mention sometimes when a texture or a character or anything doesn't load properly in the game you'll just see a giant error screen and that's okay doesn't mean anything really. It just means you won't see it because it just doesn't exist. So next thing are tools. Let's click Cartoon HUD. Tools are basically ways to manipulate the world without directly doing anything insane. So 
let's say how I just click Cartoon HUD, if I go and start a new game, the HUD of my character should be a cartoon now. Or it should look all cartoony. Yeah, see the bottom left? It no longer has that health stuff. So if I drop down... Yeah, it goes down that way. It just changes the way the HUD looks. So, a lot of tools are really quality of life features and like just changes in the game that benefit you. Whether you're building something or creating like a movie scene or just doing whatever you think you want to do with the game. NPCs, NPCs are straightforward. Let's play Ultimate Next Bot Starter Pack. And see, this is a good time to say. So if you're downloading a mod that needs another mod to work, it'll automatically pull up which add-ons you need. So if you're downloading a mod and you need another mod for it to work, it'll automatically pull up which mod you need. So if you click that, and then you click confirm, it'll just download basically everything you need already. Now if you go to NPCs, it'll be right there, in this case, in a memes tab. So now if I click Slepa, or let's say whatever this is, now if you go to entities, they're basically like props in a way that are very specific and interactable. For example, a Vocaloid Radio. So it's a radio in the game you're able to turn on and off. Effects is exactly what you think it is. This effect is a 0-2 tool gun screen replacement, so... Or 2D damage numbers, so like if you're shooting something, you'll just see damage numbers pop up. And by the way, as you can see, like, all the other mods I've downloaded, they're, they're all still here. Memes, or my health bar. It's all still here. So if I go to tools now... Yep, now the screen is 0-2 dancing. Or if I spawn, if I spawn like a, like a zombie. Now it shows the numbers that come up when you hit damage. Vehicles, again, straightforward vehicles. You download it, you're able to just spawn it into the world. And models. Now this is the part that you might be really interested in. Especially if you want to like change the way your character looks. Let's click this Neko Arc one. And now if you go to the context menu, or click the C key and you go to player model, that player model should be there now. And the way you'd want to like switch it so you're able to see is just reloading the game. Is just click start new game. As you can see my hands already messed up too. Now I'm that character. The most useful button here on the mods menu is this open workshop button because because what you can do here is just directly search whichever one you want. So Let's type in, I don't know, animate. Let's click weapon. My fist gun and my gravity gun all have a bunch of anime characters on it. I'm still that Nekoar character. And now if you go to weapons, you'll have to see anime fists. I think I covered majority of what you need to know. That's it. It's over. We're done. You know Gary's mod. Play however you want, do whatever you want, have fun. Alright, I think I think that's it. But that's not it. Because now you will see me speedrun building the best goddamn Minecraft house I can build in Gary's mod. Mainly because uh, I didn't want this footage to go to waste. I thought I was going to use this at some point during the tutorial. Nope, it never came up to use it. The only time I used it was like five seconds at the beginning. Okay, and begin.